Hi, it's Destiny from Desfix and welcome back to another series in the channel. In this one, we'll get started working with a blog application using Django, Django REST framework and React.js. That is all we'll be doing. Hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new. Do make sure to drop a like and also consider subscribing to the channel. You can also turn on the bell notification so that you know when exactly we drop new tutorials on this series. So without any further ado, Let's get started. So I will start off by showing a demo of what we will actually be building in this series. So if I'm to open up my code here, then you will see that I have my React server running over here on port. I think that should be port um, 3000, which is port 3000. And I also have my Django server running here on port 8000 and all these are synced up. That means I, cannot, I can actually go ahead and open up my browser on ports or oh, actually it's ports 5173 for react and we can actually see this over here so for the front end and ui we worked with react js and bootstrap and for the back end and api we worked with django django rest framework python and a couple more smaller packages so you can immediately see that we have trending articles over here and you can see that we have this 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 and this now, I know you might not actually see some real thumbnails or real titles over here, but it is, this is just to depict what it actually looks like, right? And you can also see that we have um, this like button, this bookmark button, and the author's name, the dates that the post was actually made, how many views that those posts have actually got. We can see the thumbnail and also the title, obviously. And over here, we can also see pagination. So we can actually start off by paginating, which means if you click on number two, we go over to the second page while still maintaining this without reloading the page, without actually making much changes, but we just tweak the DOM a little bit and render the other parts of the post, okay? And you can also click on the next if you don't wanna click on this buttons over here. So if you click on next, you can see we have all the posts paginated perfectly well. And when it gets to the end, the button gets disabled and the previous gets enabled, which means you can actually go back all the way from where you came. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can then see the categories. We've got health, entertainment, finance, sports, arts, technology, lifestyle, and cryptocurrency. And you can also see how many articles that each and every one of these have got. For example, the health has 19 articles, the entertainment one, the finance four, sports, arts, technology, and so on don't have articles yet. And if you also come down here, you can see popular articles. These are articles that actually get listed based on their popularity, okay? So you can see 139 views is the very first one, followed by 104 views, 19, then the other ones that don't have any views yet. All right, and as usual, we still have a pagination over here. Then you can see our minimal simple footer and also our header over here where we show our logo, our search imputes, some navigation buttons, register and login. So before we work with the register and login, um, okay, actually, let me go ahead and show the register and login. You can create an account and you might ask, um, you might be asking, why do we actually need a, an authentication system in a blog app? And one of the reasons will be for actually saving a post um, for read later or to your bookmark and also for the author. So an author can create an account on the platform and actually make their own posts, okay? So it's it's more like a multi-blogging system where other authors can hop on and create an account and write their own posts, all right? Okay, so I'll show you guys that later. So when you click on the register, you can see that we open up the registration page over here. I can fill this up real quick. And in case you don't know this plugin, it's called Fake Filler. You could go ahead and download it. Um, it's on Google Chrome, it's on Mozilla Firefox. I think it's also on, on Edge, I think so. Just search for Fake Filler extension. We will be using it in a lot of places in this tutorial because it makes things easier for us and when it comes to filling up forms, okay? So now that we've filled this up, the name, the email address, the password, the confirmed password, if any of this is missing, let's say an email that's 
already existing databases here. We throw an error. If the password doesn't match, we throw an error. Just the basic authentication, security checks, and you know things like that. So we can go ahead and hit sign up. You see, we disable the button and show processing. When we create an account by calling the API, you can see over here that we called the registration API here, sending a post request of all the informations that we got at, like the full name, the email, the passwords, and sends it over to this API here. And it's registered an account for us and actually logged us in automatically and redirected us back to the home page, which means over here now we can open up a post like this, you see? And we can actually read the post. This post have got a very short description over here. I know if there are if there are still a lot of descriptions, you can you will see them show up here. And we then have the authors detail, their Facebook, their Twitter. We also have comments feature. You can see the avatar, the name, the dates that the comment was posted, the actual comment itself. And down here you can you can still leave a comment. So you could put your name as Blaine, your email as this, and your comments as this, and hit post comments. See, comments posted. And when you scroll all the way to the top, you can see Blaine, this, and the dates that the comments gets posted. So if for any reason you want to be able to moderate comments before they go live, now this one is totally up to you. I will show you guys how I worked on this. In the, in the API, you just have to turn active comments to false when it gets created so that it doesn't right off the bat get, um, you know, listed over here. I hope that makes sense. You can also see some pretty basic things about the post, like the date, how many minutes that you could read this post for, the likes, the views, and the hashtags that we've got over here. So I noticed that something was actually missing and that is the like and the bookmark over here in the post detail. I had to quickly add that in. And as soon as you click on this now, can you see the like feature is working? It shows an alert that says posts liked. You can also bookmark. You see it shows post on bookmarked because it was initially bookmarked. Okay. So that is pretty much it for, for the front end. Now you can come over to pages. You can see the about page. This is it. You could tweak it with whatever way you want. You can also see the contacts page. Um, actually, a map is supposed to load up over here. I think it's due to an API key issue, right? When you or can you see that's coming in? When you replace the API key, you can actually get your map and you know things like that. Okay, so now that we are done with reviewing the basic things, let's actually get started reviewing the authors dashboard. When you click on this, you can see a couple of links over here. Starting with the dashboard. Then you can see that we have 24 posts here that has been written by this particular user that is logged in. And you can see all the posts show up over here with their views, their likes from latest to oldest. Okay. Now it's up to you how you want to do this. You can actually filter this by um, most popular or by date created, you know, pretty much whatever you want. You can also see all the comments that this author has gotten. So far, he has 10 comments and notifications, no notifications yet. So when things like likes happen, notifications are supposed to show up here, okay? And you can also see all the blog posts um, in a more detailed view show up down here, even based on their status, disabled, drafted, active, and pretty much all this. So that's it for here. You can click on this to view all the posts. You can click on this to view all the comments, and you can also see the total views, total posts, total likes, total bookmarks, all right? So now let's hop over to all the posts and you can actually search for a post. So as soon as you start searching, do you see it filters the post? You don't even have to click on any button to search or anything like that. But as soon as you start searching, it filters the post as simple as that. And you can also sort post by oldest to newest or newest to oldest. You see that is working as expected. So you can also delete a post or edit a post. Let's start by trying to edit this post called the fastest car in the world. So I will click on this. We can still see the thumbnail show up over here. And if you want to select a new thumbnail, that is up to you. If you want to change the title, let's say I want to change the title to updated and change the thumbnail to, I don't know, maybe something else, something like this. Okay. And hit update post. See post updated. And now let's search for fastest car. 
Can you see? We now have updated and the thumbnail was actually updated. So now that we have all this, let's hop over to the next thing, which is creating a new post. So you can actually choose a new thumbnail from here. Let's say I want to choose this thumbnail or you could choose this one. It's totally up to you what you want to choose. And I will say add a title. I could just say um, why everyone should wear or should have a, a green heart. Okay. And you could choose the post category. Let's say fashion or sports or entertainment. It's totally up to you what you want to choose. Then you can add a post description. For now, I will just add this. This is how I actually come up with my descriptions, okay? And you can add tags. You can say a heart. You can say health, whatever you want. And you could choose a status for your post and create posts. See, post created successfully. It's as simple as that. And now you can see your post show up over here. You could go ahead and edit the post change the status. Okay, I think the status isn't showing up over here. I'll have to see what's going on with the status where we get started with the tutorial. Now you can see that we have 25 posts and if you hop over back to the dashboard, you can now see 25 posts. That's all good. You can also come over to comments. This is where you, you manage your comments from. So you can reply a comment. This one says um, this. I need to show you the ones that don't have replies yet. So you can say something like, um, thanks buddy, even though I don't know what he said. And since this is in English, obviously, then you can send this and you see it immediately updates without even reloading the page. It says, thanks buddy. Now you could do the same thing for every other comments that we have over here. It's as simple as that. And the next one on our list is notifications. Since we don't have any notification, we don't see anything here yet, but it's pretty much like, Hey, you have a new, like you have a new comment, you have a new reply to the comments and things like that. You will definitely see how it all works. And over here we have profile, which is the very last one on my list. You can actually choose um, your profile image, change your name to whatever you want. So let's say I want to change my name to Destiny Franks, Desfix, and add about me, software developer, and country Nigeria. Okay, that isn't, this is country. I think they, they all have the same placeholder. We can change that later, okay? So um, you can actually just go ahead and update profile. See, profile updated successfully. If you reload this page, we still retain everything that we just updated right now. So that is pretty much it. And finally, you could go ahead and log out. And you can see you have been logged out. Do you want to log in or do you want to register? So we can get back to login. And this is how the login works. Put in your your email address, your password, and he's signed in. And if there is an account that exists, it signs you in and you can start performing any operation that you want from over here. So I think that was pretty much it. If there is anything that I'm, that I forgot to demo, we will actually have to go through it when we start off with the tutorial. You can also drop a comment in the comment section if you think there is something that, that I am missing, or if you think there is a feature that needs to be added that isn't here yet. Maybe I haven't actually thought about it. And, you know, just keep dropping your comments and keep listing features. And um, I will actually start making the tutorials for this and start pushing them out. Hopefully you will enjoy the video and learn something new. Please consider dropping a like and also subscribe to the channel. And if you're looking to build an application, maybe for a startup or something, I don't know what it might be, maybe an e-commerce, a banking application, a blogging system, a social media application, whatever, you can send a mail to desfix at gmail.com and we'll have a conversation with you and actually put you through on how to get started with your startup. That is it. I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, mad love, peace out.